Hello, this is Matteo Urbanati from the Fraser Academy, the first and only online training school on router bits and anything related to the cutting and routing of wood. And today, I'm going to show you how to make a raised panel cabinet door in a simple and easy way, even if you're a beginner. Before getting into the tutorial, I would suggest you download the PDF you find in the first link in the description box below and keep an eye on it. Well, the step-by-step -step tutorial will guide you through everything. We're going to use a Fraser kit including the FR.225 and the FR.214 router bits, link in the description. The first one is adjustable, which means you can adapt it to create the whole frame of a cabinet door. And the second one is a horizontal panel raising bit, which we are going to use to cut the central panel. We are going to mount both router bits on a router well fixed under a router table. Turn off and unplug the router and insert the adjustable router bit in the spindle, pushing it until it reaches the K symbol engraved on the shank. Tighten everything and adjust the height according to the thickness of the wood. Go ahead and mark the rails, the styles, and the good side of the central panel with different letters, as shown in the PDF file, to keep everything under control as our cabinet door starts to take shape. Let's start with the styles. Make sure that each cut is made from the front facing down. As shown in the PDF file, identifying the front face is important when cutting different pieces. The bottom of the lower cutter needs to line up with the lower edge of our piece of wood. To put it more simply, bring the lower cutter to the same level as the working surface where the wood piece lies. I would like to remind you that for this router bit model, the ideal working height is 22 millimeters, as indicated in the cutting height column in the FraserTools.com mega store. Adjust the fence using a straight edge so that the fence is even with the bearing for a smooth cut, without any burn marks. We set the RPM to 14,000, and then we run your stock through the router in a single pass. Again, with the help of the PDF file, we proceed and route the edge of the rails. As with the styles, the front face of rails is going to be facing downward on the router table. Assemble the pieces you've cut so far to verify that everything is fitting, and then adjust the router bit to cut the rail ends. This is the part that will fit into the profile in the styles. Making the necessary adjustment to the router bit is simple. After disassembling the various parts, put them back together in this order. One, the slot cutter. Two, two shims. Three, the bearing. Four, the profile cutter. Install the bit in the router, set the height so it's even with the groove produced in the previous milling operation. If you have used the wood of the correct thickness for the joint, for example, the one indicated on the router bit's technical data sheet, all you have to do is set the bottom edge of your router bit's lower cutter to zero on the routing table. You can also use a ruler to check that the lower cutter is at the same level as the router table. Now, slide the fence in position by holding a straight edge on the bearing to make sure it's flush with the fence. Tighten everything and then carefully proceed to the cutting operations. Once the rails are perfectly cut, you can check your pieces with a dry fit of the rails and styles. And there you have it, your strong, durable, and flat-proof joint.
Before moving on to the central panel, it is only right and proper to celebrate the result. So we've decided to modernize. Edward munches the scream with Pancaleo's tongue. Back to our cabinet door. Remove the adjustable router bit we use for cutting the rails and the styles and install the race panel router bit. Since what we're going to be installing is the largest cutter so far, its diameter is of 86 millimeters, we need to make more space. So if you usually use the A basic plate, you only need to remove the last ring. Turn off and unplug the router and insert the bit in the spindle by pushing it up to the K symbol engraved on the shank. To set the height, start from the top of your panel. Mark a line on its edges of the same thickness as the groove on the frame. Then lay your piece facing down and align the mark with the top edge of the cutter. Set the fence parallel to the bearing on the router bit. Tighten everything and feed the panel through the router. And cut all its four sides at 10,000 RPM. And here it is. Our DIY race panel cabinet door is ready to be assembled. To fix each piece permanently, use a thin layer of jointal vinyl glue. Press and wait at least 20 minutes for the glue to dry. To finish the work in the best way possible, we disassemble the router bit and check its condition before putting it back in its case. Since it's made enough cuts and has important residues, it is necessary a degreasing bath with a highly effective Toolsner 3.0. Let the product work for a few minutes and then using a brush and some elbow grease, scrape off any trace of dirt. Once it is dried well, to protect the router bit, we use a few drops of bit top, the miraculous liquid that keeps your tool as good as new and prolongs its cutting performances. This is an exclusive Fraser product that you can get for free each time you buy our router bits on our website. Before I leave you, I'd like to give a little recap of everything we've done. As you've probably seen in the PDF file, if you haven't already done so, I recommend downloading it by clicking on the first link in the description box below. 
Cabinet doors consist of two basic elements, the door frame, which is made up of two styles, the long vertical frame components of the door, and two rails, the horizontal frame components of the door, one at the top and the other at the bottom, and the central panel. To make the frame of styles and rails, we use a type of joiner router bit called Cabinet Door Frame Router Bit, and you can easily find it on our online mega store. This kind of router bit is adjustable, so with it you can cut both the rails and the styles. To cut the center portion of a cabinet door, we use the horizontal raised panel router bit. You can find it in the www.frasertools.com mega store as well. You can buy each one of them separately depending on the desired profile you want to create, or you can find both inside the cabinet door router bit sets available on our website, like the one you saw in the video. That's all for now. If you like this video and want more practical and effective tips on the world of router bits for wood, then the Fraser Academy is the right place for you. This is the best online training resource for hobbyists and craftsmen, where you can find anything about router bits for wood and woodworking, so that you can finally become an extremely skilled router bit user. Please note that the Fraser Academy is currently only available in Italian. You can find all the robust Fraser router bits and tools used in this video, which are essential to get a perfect result in the online shop dedicated to wood routing, www.frasertools.com. See you soon, Matteo.